How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. I found this model tugboat at my local hobby store and I was very happy to see that it was in 1 to 70 second scale, which means it will fit perfectly into my wild imaginary west. The box says that this is an old Coast Guard tugboat, but I decided to take it in another direction. I went with the obvious choice of having it in the midst of a battle with a giant lobster. After breaking it out of the box, I started cleaning up the mold lines and sprue marks with my hobby knife and a sanding stick before assembly. There is an option to motorize the screw, but the parts required for that feature are sold separately, so unfortunately this boat will not be going anywhere. It's also going to be permanently sealed in a block of resin, so it wouldn't have moved much anyway. I stuck the pieces together with plastic weld, and once I had all the main pieces together, I started adding some greeblies. I knew I needed to have the interiors painted dark before gluing the boat sections together permanently, so I went outside and I did that before moving on with the build. I made sure to mask off the window so I would be able to somewhat see through them later on, and then I glued the boat layers back together and I continued happily adding my greeblies. I included a few little details here and there, like a hoist arm on the stern, I ran some various pipes and wires around, put some styrene antennas above the bridge, and I added a little harpoon cannon with a platform at the bow of the ship for hunting giant crustaceans. I also included a few guns on the rails to help defend against said crustaceans and other threats like pirates or chupacabra mermaids. After the ship looked thoroughly greeblied, I masked all the windows and I took the ship outside to prime. I gave the ship a zenithal highlight, but I changed my mind how I wanted to paint this black and white Mickey Mouse steamboat willy. So the zenithal highlight was basically pointless. I covered up the black and white prime with a flat rusty brown undercoat and then I covered that layer with a chipping medium. This will allow me to cover it with other paint colors and chip those away to reveal the brown paint underneath. If you want to learn from someone who has perfected this and other weathering techniques, go check out Nick from Abandoned Miniatures. I'll link his channel below. I airbrushed on the rest of the colors and I used masking tape to get some nice clean lines between colors in a few places, including the smokestack and on the hull. Once all the main colors were on, I used some water to reactivate the paint and I rubbed it off with my finger as well as an old paintbrush. I gave the boat a layer of matte varnish and then I added multiple colors of washes to complete the weathering. I painted on a few of the finer details with a brush and then I peeled the mask off the windows. Once I had painted all of the window frames, the boat was ready to hit the water. Speaking of water, I saw some movement in my paint water and I reached in to find out what was going on. I pulled out this angry little guy and it looked like he was angry because of some print lines and some places where the print was not perfect, but after I had patched those up with some putty and primed him, he was a lot happier. Thank you kind sir. I looked around the internet for color inspiration for this lobster and I found a photo of a nice red and blue lobster on Wikipedia. I wanted to use a crawfish originally, but I couldn't find a file suitable for my purposes, and this lobster was in a great tugboat attacking pose, so that's why I went with this one. After I had established the base colors for the lobster with the airbrush, I went back in with a paintbrush and I painted on all the finer details, including some little lines on the knees, the antennas, and some black beady eyes. After that, it was time to move on to the container for the resin. To make the walls of the resin mold, I used some sheets of acrylic plexiglass. I scored and snapped them to the right size, and then I peeled off their protective film. I then glued the four walls onto a base, and I made an eight by 14 inch rectangle. I used hot glue to seal all the gaps along the seams, and I did a water test to ensure that it was watertight. The 
It was not watertight, so I used some hot glue to try and patch up the hole, which didn't work. So I vowed never to use hot glue ever again. At least for resin molds. Instead, I used some silicone, and that did the trick. I then prepared the boat and the lobster for their resin bath by gluing them together, and I came up with a way to hold them in place while the resin cured with the help of my wife. I mixed my deep pour epoxy resin with hardener using the listed ratios, and because epoxy likes to heat up when you mix it in large volumes, I made two buckets to avoid overheating. Or I thought it would keep it from overheating, but that's a spoiler. I added some pigments to tint the resin to the color I was looking for, and then I mixed it all together. After it was mixed, I used a vacuum chamber to degas the resin, which brings all of the little bubbles to the surface, making them easier to get rid of. After the resin had been degassed, I poured it into the mold. I used a stick to help make a more gentle flow and keep larger bubbles from forming. Once the resin was in the mold, I used a torch to pop the bubbles as they came to the surface, and then I covered it and I left it to cure. I woke up to an unfortunate surprise and I found that the resin had overheated while curing and caused some issues. Luckily it didn't break the seal of the mold which would have been a true disaster, but it did warp my hobby mat and unfortunately it caused a crack in the resin that went right through the lobster. It also caused some cavities in all of the corners. I have a decent fix for all of those issues. Uh, but the first thing I needed to figure out was how to minimize the damage of that crack. I mixed up a batch of non-deep pour resin and I did a pretty good job of color matching it to the original resin. I filled the crack and I added a new top layer to the whole thing. While that was curing, I prepped the crew for the boat. I picked out an assortment of figures and interestingly, the guys that came with the boat that is supposed to be 1 to 72 scale, are very different in size than the rest of these 1 to 72 scale figures. So either someone is confused about their scale or these sailors are all NBA stars. After I had cleaned up all the figures, I stuck them on a painting base and I took them outside and I primed them black. I decided to give all these soldiers the same colors to imply that they were a crew. Maybe not an official military group per se, but maybe a group of frontier soldiers or mercenaries that have formed a little monster hunting party boat. Once the top layer of resin had cured, it was time to remove the acrylic. I cut the silicone with my X-Acto knife and I began peeling away the sides. Due to the heat and warping, these sheets were far more difficult to remove than previous resin projects, and they caused a lot of frustration, as well as some cuts and scratches. I wore eye protection, because I a thousand percent knew that one of these little shards could shoot straight into my eye, and it wouldn't feel good. I finally pulled out my heat gun to remove those last stubborn pieces, and then I began patching up the holes on all the corners. I then used some masking tape and UV resin to repair the corners that caved in. Once those were filled in, I sanded all of the sides with my orbital sander. I was sure to wear a respirator the whole time because resin dust is very bad for your lungs. After removing the resin dust with an airbrush and some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel, I brought back all of the clarity with some gloss varnish.
To add some realism to the surface of the water, I broke out some water waves effects from Woodland Scenics. This bottle was far more runny than I think it's supposed to be, and it didn't form any nice peaks, but it made some okay ripples. I made sure to add some wake lines behind the ship, and when that was dry, I added some white water around all the places that would be a little bit more agitated. After the water was in place, I added the crew. I added a few more finishing details, and after that, I called it good. If I'm being honest, I'm pretty bummed about that crack in the resin. I enjoyed the process of recovering from the mishap, and I think it looks better than it could have, but it definitely takes away from the effect. It's a good reminder though that mistakes happen and not every project will turn out exactly as planned. It's important to problem solve and not be afraid to try things again that you failed. That being said, I'm never going to try resin again, uh, but you should try things again that you failed. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Extra special thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.